defensive lines uh, assignments uh, are simplified. They're, that way we can really hone in on being technically sound and playing very violent. Uh, we don't run a whole lot of uh, different runs. You know, we're going to run the basic inside zone, outside zones, gap schemes. Uh, but, you know, every play has some type of out. You know, the, the quarterback's got different choices to make. And uh, the thing we've got to do up there is, is be a great technicians and play with extreme violence. Uh, J.J. McCargo, his recent retirement, I mean, you guys knew Nick Polino, gave, gave him a lot of work at center during spring camp. How did Nick grow in that role throughout the spring camp? You know, during uh, the early part, uh, it was an adjustment for him snapping the football. And over the last, you know, five or six uh, practices, he did really well. But at center, a uh, young man came on really well for us, Brian Anderson. He had a good spring. And I think if Brian's earned some snaps, and it'll be interesting to see who ends up being the center when it comes uh, that to holding the game. What are the biggest challenges you think this offensive line faces? The biggest challenge? You know, to find the five uh, guys who can play uh, the continuity, getting five guys that can be consistent. Uh, <clears throat> we're looking for five guys that play with extreme effort on every snap, five guys that have an attitude. Uh, every day they show up that uh, we're going to be the toughest unit on the field. Uh, you know, again, you've got to have five guys that play with extreme toughness. They got to be both mentally and, and physically tough. That that they're not distracted. Uh, that they do their job on a consistent basis. And uh, we want five guys who know what to do. That every, you know we don't have mental errors. That we we know our offense so well that we play instinctive and, and play fast. And like I said, play violent. What did you see with uh, Charlie Heck this spring in terms physically, mentally, and with his his life in the coaching business with his dad? I'll say, I'll say this. Charlie Heck is a pleasure to coach. Uh, a lot of times you can come into a, a, a new system, a new uh, program, and you've got a, a senior who may balk at, at coaching because I may do something a little different from a previous coach or something like that. Charlie has embraced what we try to teach and he's been a pleasure to coach. Uh, you know, in, in my career, it's always hard to find lead tackles. And uh, I think right now we've got two pretty good tackles in Charlie Heck uh, and Jordan Tucker. They both have length, they both have size, they both have athleticism. And I'm excited about the two tackles, and I, I think they can be really good. I think Charlie can, you know, if he continues to, to uh, grow, get stronger, play, with, play physical, he can play as long as he wants to play. You know, and the bloodlines, you know, his dad's a great coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, I met him years ago at, at the cool coaching clinic up in Cincinnati. And, and he was a very, very sound coach back then. And I enjoyed listening to him speak. And, and now to be able to coach his son is a pleasure. How's the depth going on? I know there's quite a few guys that haven't got a whole lot of snaps that are <clears throat> factoring in the one, two. You know, we, we probably had 14 or 15 kids, maybe more than that, 16 maybe who, who uh, rotated this spring, you know, who, who, who practiced. Now, are they 14, 15, 16 ready to play now? But, uh, you know, as far as bodies being able to practice, being, having a, being able to have a, a blue, white, and gray unit, our first, second, third unit, uh, that, was, that was good. I've, been, I've went into places and you go to spring ball and there's seven guys on scholarship. So, there were, you know, there were guys here who played ball and have ability. Uh, the thing we've got to do is, is get the pieces of, of the puzzle in the right place. And just like Nick Polino, is he going to be the center of guard? Uh, you know, easy, uh, Joshua Zudu, is he going to be a guard or a tackle? Uh, you know, who's the third tackle? Uh, who's the second center? Who's the first center? Uh, those are some questions that I think we've got closer to answering, but they're not answering. Can you speak to the development of Ed Montellis and William Barnes? It seems like Ed had a really good spring in terms of you know, starting. Ed Montellis was outstanding. Um, the thing he's got to do is play more consistent. He just doesn't have the experience. For an offensive lineman to play well, I, I think you've got to get confident. The only way you get confident is being on that field and having good things happen. And there were certain days he was as good as anybody in practice. So he, he uses his hands well, he played physical, he, he, he moved his feet well. And then there would be days that he, he laps a little bit. So if we're going to be a really good football team and compete to win the Coastal, the coastal 
championship and, and the ACC championship. We got to have guys consistent every day. Ed has the ability to be a, a really good player in this league. He's got to be more consistent. But I thought he was a bright spot in the offensive line this spring. And then William Barnes, where is he playing and what's his development you know, like? Because he came in as a, as a really elite recruit. Right. And uh, William uh, has, has struggled with his weight a little bit this spring. And, uh, but he's done a great job. He's probably lost 25 pounds. Need to keep, keep doing that. And uh, he's a work in progress. What's the ideal way for him to play? Mm, you know, we, me and Coach Hess have him go away, and uh, we'll get there. Did you recruit those two guys at, at Miami? We, uh, they were at the pop. We, we recruited yeah. those, both those guys. And I watched both of them practice. And uh, Ed Montellis, when I watched him practice at the pop, they have a very, very, very physical practice. And he caught my eye. He caught my eye there. Coach Tim Brewster talked a lot about uh, recruiting and bringing in the best guys. What do you look for specifically in an offensive lineman? Are you looking for guys over a certain height? Or are you looking for what do you look for when you? Well, you, you, you have a, a certain size you would like. Mm -hmm. You know our tackles. These tackles we have here, six six, six seven, three hundred plus. Got great feet, long arms. That's what you're looking for. Uh, if a kid doesn't have certain size that you want they've got they got to have something else they got to be special they got to have uh, extreme heart extreme strength great quickness they got to have something that makes up for the deficiencies and uh, the longer I'm in this thing the more I understand it's more about attitude and heart than just your size and, and, and all these stars that these so-called recruiting experts have it's about your heart Mindset. We're looking for intelligent guys that, that can one thrive at this school, but two on the offensive line. You've got to make a decision like this, and the, and the air raid offense is even quicker. Okay, and you've got a 310 guy, uh, 310 pound guy breathing down your neck on the other side. I've got to make some decisions real quick. So you want intelligent guys that can take on their feet quick. One of the challenges some of the offensive line said at the beginning of spring camp was the difference between spread and air raid was it's even faster. And it's getting a lot of scrimmage faster, especially with only getting the play signal in one time. How do they progress in that respect during the spring? These kids picked up very quickly. Uh, I thought we played fast. I, you know, in, in a spread, in a um, air raid, whatever you want to call it, offense, the old line coach is always trying to get them to go faster, trying to get them to go faster. You know, I, I felt like these guys got up, got set, and were ready to go uh, by the time the, the officials going to have the ball set. So I don't think that's a, a major issue, and uh, I thought the kids did a good job. Okay, I think we got time for one, one last one, and we got. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. two, two other players that I was wondering about is Billy Ross and Marcus McKeithen. McKeithen came in as a kind of a, a raw prospect with great physical attributes. How are those two guys working in, and what positions do you see them? You know, Billy is, is rotating with the first and second, or the blue and gri blue and white unit, or first and second units and has done a good job. He's had certain days better than others. Uh, again, we're looking for the consistency. Marcus has shown flashes of, of being able to uh, compete in this league, and uh, he's got to do it on a daily basis right now. Great. Thanks, Coach. Good. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, ma'am. All right. I'll let you do that. <laughs>